Welcome to episode eight of this DP Animation Maker series. Today, I will show you how to create videos with a transparent background so you can use them as overlays. Since they can be placed on top of other backgrounds, they are reusable, allowing you to animate buttons, logos, objects, and all kinds of elements. Open the DP Animation Maker, go to Import, and click on Open Image. I will select this ghost on a transparent background. Click Continue, and then you can select an animation template. You can make it rotate, scroll, move on a path, and so on. This time, I will select Still Object, and then I will click Finish Import. Right now, it's on top of a random background or whatever background you added when you changed it. However, I don't want any background. I want it to be transparent. So I will go to Choose Effect and select No Background. Now you can see the pattern indicating that we are on a transparent background. You can move the image around, but I want a size that fits my ghost, so I click on the Settings button. From there, I can adjust the width and height for the transparent background. I'll go with this size. Now we can animate the ghost. Click on the brush, and let's select maybe the wave brush, then click Apply. You can make the brush larger and paint over the ghost. Right now, nothing happens because by default, it paints on the background, and we don't have a background. So go to Settings, and where it says Apply Animation to, change it from Background Only to Previous Layer or Whole Scene. Now everything starts moving. You can use all kinds of brushes to make it move. This is just a quick example. I can take an eraser and maybe remove the animation from the head so it doesn't get distorted. Then we can play with the direction and length of the wave and try different things until something seems to fit the subject. Let's say we're happy with the animation. Now let's save it as a video. Go to export and now the issue is that not all video formats support transparency. You have a PNG sequence that you could save and import into another software or you can select the MOV file type since it supports transparency. Then give it a name and click Save. From the settings, you can change the video duration, and for the codec, instead of JPEG, choose PNG with an alpha channel. You can adjust the quality and then click Export. This format with transparency usually takes more time to export than an MP4 file, for example. Then we can test it in a video editor like CapCut. I will just import a background to see if it works on top of any background now, and then we'll add the ghost video. I will drag the background onto the timeline, and then the ghost on top. As you can see, the video has a transparent background, and we can move it around. If I duplicate the ghost, we can see how well it loops. Right now, it almost loops, but there is a little twitch when the new video begins. What you can try sometimes is to change the duration when you go to export and see if it helps make the loop smoother. You can also add a loop transition, depending on the animation you have, maybe between 1 and 5 seconds. So if I go now, import the new video, duplicate it, and test again, the loop is much better. With a few experiments, you can create loopable videos. We can make the ghost smaller or bigger, but for example, when I move it over the wall, I expect the ghost to be see-through on the wall. From the blend options, we can reduce the opacity, but that won't keep the luminosity so it won't work. What we can do instead is change the blending mode from default to screen. Now, it's much better, and we can see through the ghost. Maybe we can animate the ghost so it moves around. In CapCut, like in many other editors, you can do keyframe animation. For example, for all the transformations, I can add a keyframe here. You can see this little diamond shape on the timeline as well. Now, I can go to the beginning, for example, and move the ghost down. When I play it, CapCut will add animation frames between those two keyframes, so it looks like it's coming up. You can also drag those keyframe animations closer together, so the animation is much faster. Let's see how it looks. I played around with keyframe animation to see what else I could do for two minutes, and I was able to create this animation where it looks like the ghost is coming close from the shadows and then going out of view. Let's try another one. I will go and import this torch support and use the still object template. Then, of course, remove the background and from the settings, adjust the width and height. Now we can add an animation. Let's say I add the fire animation. I can move it so it looks like it's coming from here and then 
place it behind the torch support. You can change the direction if you want, and you can adjust the settings to change the density, width, height, and of course the speed of the animation. You can also make it more transparent using the translucency slider. Now let's add another brush animation. There's a new one recently added called the Fire Spark Brush. You just paint an area and the Fire Spark Brush will start to appear from that spot. You can hide the mask to see it better. You can also try moving it behind if it's too strong to look like it's only coming from the top or paint only on top of the flame. I think I'll move it down a little. Now we can export it just like before in MOV format. I will make the duration longer so it fits my entire video length and maybe add a three second loop transition. Don't forget to select PNG with alpha, then click export. Now I can import it again into CapCut and it's transparent. Look at this area on the flame. Now, if I make it smaller and put it on the wall, you can see a dark contour around the flame. That happens because we have a soft edge there, like a transition. It's not a hard edge like on the torch support. Things with blur around them can have a dark shadow around the edges. In that case, maybe you can export the animation of the flame separately from the torch. And then for the flame, you can use the screen blend mode like we did with the ghost, so it blends better. You can also try using adjustment settings to improve the blend in some cases. There are also auto adjust settings or the color match function, which can sometimes be useful to match the colors with a frame from the video and then reduce the intensity. Additionally, you can try applying filters to change the mood of the entire scene and see if any of the filters improve it. Once you find a filter you like, you can add it on top of everything and extend it to fit the entire scene. You can also adjust the intensity of the filter you can add all kinds of effects as well. For example, I can add this radial blur effect and try different settings. Of course, I can use keyframe animation on that effect so the settings change over time. So now it looks like this. I know I'm moving fast through CapCut, but this is just to give you an idea. The purpose of this video is to show you how to create transparent backgrounds with DP Animation Maker. Let me show you another example. This time I will import a logo as a still object and you know the rest of the steps. Remove the background and change the size. For this one, I will go to the Effects tab and click on the plus sign to add an effect. If I add the pulsation, the logo will start to pulsate. You can remove it by clicking the X button. For vibration, the logo will move up and down, so you can use it for buttons, logos, arrows, levitating objects, etc. For blinking, it can be used for blinking lights. Swinging is also useful for anything that swings. Spin we used in another episode to make the windmill blades rotate, and it can be used for fans, wheels, etc. There's also deformation, so try experimenting to see what works best. I will go with pulsation, and from the settings, I can change how the animation looks. I'll adjust the amplitude so it doesn't get too small when it pulsates. Now I can export this logo and use it for all kinds of intro and outro videos when I need it. I can drag it into CapCut and use it somewhere in the middle or at the end of the video, and you can add extra animation for the beginning, like a mouse click, an open effect, or this gold sand effect, which could look cool. The only limit is your creativity. You can do so much more. Export snow, rain, flying particles, fog, animate objects, and then add them here it's useful to have a transparent background for some of the objects to have more control over placement and layering. Let me show you one more trick. I will go to Import and then open this robotic fish on a transparent background. I am selecting the Still Object animation. I will choose No Background and change the size of the transparent background. I want to animate the tail so it looks like it's swimming. To do that, I go to Brushes and try different brushes that can give me the motion I'm after. I think I will use the turn brush for this one and then apply the animation. Next, I go to axis position and we can move this point, which is the point where the area we paint will rotate. I wanna rotate it at the beginning of the tail. Then I take a large brush and paint over the tail, but nothing happens yet because we need to go to settings and apply the animation to the whole scene. Now we see some movement. Paint over the entire tail and make sure you have enough space around the fish when creating the size for the background. Then from settings, you can change the speed, amplitude, and so on. You can also change the direction so you have a lot of control. I think I will 
change the axis to this direction and it kind of looks like it's swimming now. Okay, now we can export it. However, since I want to be able to import it back into this program, I can't use a video export. So I will use a PNG sequence instead. To get a loopable animation, the trick here seems to be getting the right number of samples so it loops the animation. You can export with the default settings and delete extra frames to make it repeat. I did some tests, and for the speed I used for this fish, a number of 30 samples worked for me. It might be different for you though. You can change the destination for this and I suggest creating a folder for it. Then click export. Let's test it on a new project. First, save the existing project in case you need to make any changes. Then I will import the animation frames. Click on the add frames button. Go to the folder where you save the frames, select all with control plus A and click the open button. Now we can choose the animation template and I will go with one path since it gives me more control. Then click finish import. Next, we need to adjust the size and direction. But first, let me move the path so it comes from one side, makes a turn, and comes back to the other side. I will flip it so it has the right direction. Now, this animation is for how fast the frames move, so we can adjust the speed of the tail movement. You can type values larger than the slider lets you. Then, from the Path Edit tool, you can change the speed of the fish moving along that path. I will change only the horizontal orientation so it changes direction when it comes back. I will also change the size to make it smaller. Now just play with the settings until you like it. You can also add effects. For example, I can add a pulsation effect to make it bigger or smaller as it moves along the path. But obviously, it moves too fast, so we can adjust the speed to make it slower. That way, it will look like it's coming closer and farther away in perspective instead of just pulsating. Finally, let's add a random background to test it. If you found something useful, please leave a like and a comment to help me monetize this channel. Thank you, and I will see you on Discord.